any standard. But leading a Miami offense that has been inconsistent this season. Quick toss by Harris. Now to Alan Hearns who lost the football after the catch. And the Seminoles LaMarcus Joyner runs it in for a touchdown. Not the way they wanted to start it, Sean. Mike Harris, like you said, just really well played. And the Seminoles have been talking about getting turnovers. You don't get any better than that. First play. They're reviewing it. Al Golden talked about the importance of getting off to a fast start in this environment. That's not what he had in mind either. Mike Harris stripped it. And Joyner ran it back in after the Allen Hearns fumble. As they're know. reviewing it to see if Hearns had possession before the fumble, if it was a catch and then a fumble. There's the catch. Yeah, that to me that looks like a fumble. That's well played by Harris. And then Joyner, there at number 20. Sean, whenever you put the tape on, that kid shows up all over the field. He has great speed, extremely good instincts. It's not a mistake that he's the guy who shows up here. Good hustle to the football, nice strip. It looked like he had it turned up the field and then was stripped of it by Mike Harris. Jeff Flanagan is the referee. Ted Jackson is the replay official. the coaches sweated out. Heather mentioned the familiarity between the coaches and players. LaMarcus Joyner is one of five players on Florida State's team out of St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale, one of the best high school programs in the country. And there are also five players from St. Thomas Aquinas on the Miami team. So that school's produced 10 players in this game. Sean, I learned a long time ago in the game of football that Familiarity does not breed contempt. It breeds confidence. Once you start knowing the guy across from you well, then you know what you can do and what to expect. And that usually breeds very, very competitive battles inside. Timbo Fisher won his first game as the head coach against Miami in this rivalry last year. Now Al Golden trying to do it. Yeah. That looks to me like a catch. Yeah. He's starting to put it away, and then he punched it out. And so many players today, Matt, unfortunately, carried the ball as Hearns looked like he was going to with one hand on either side of the ball rather than tuck it high and tight. Boy, this has taken a very long time now in the replay booth. Yeah, we talk about four points of pressure whenever you're carrying the football, whether you're catching the ball or running with it. And the first is your hand. The second is your forearm. The third is the elbow, the crook of your elbow. And then the fourth is in against your side. Now, obviously, catching the ball, trying to bring it in, that's a lot to do at one time. And Harris knew him, and he cheated on it, I know it, because he, he made him skip steps two and three. <laughs> Punched it out. I was afraid you were going to miss one or two. It was going to yeah. remind me of some political debates. I had my debates. shoes off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They are still reviewing this, I and mean, it's an important call because if they overturn it, obviously it's Miami's ball. No points on the board for Florida State. The Canes try to march on second and ten. Sean, one of the thing that, things that uh, Al Golden talked about was getting off to a good start. And so this, uh, this call is paramount in the way the game starts. They play well lately. Felt they played their best game of the season last week at home in their win over Duke. And they won 49 to 14. Meanwhile, Jimbo Fisher's Florida State Seminoles in that four-game winning streak they're riding have outscored their opponents 154 to 39. The receiver did not control the ball. Mm. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be second down at the 20-yard line. Please reset the clock. Wow. 1450. More than four minutes to review it. Of course, it has to be conclusive video evidence. Let's see. If it took four minutes, how conclusive was it? 
Okay, let's see if he had control. He did have control. Yeah. Well, one thing I learned about as a player, Sean, a long time ago, you have to live with the call that they give you. But it's supposed to be conclusive. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, was that conclusive? I mean, you maybe you could argue it either way. Yeah, you and I you see it different, but we don't have striped shirts on. Dylan and Heather Cox just underway here in Tallahassee. Miami with the first possession of the game. Ja'Cory Harris just threw it away as he was about to be sacked back at the 15-yard line. His shot, Brandon Jenkins, they should have called a hold on him because he came watching the top of your screen to your left. Watch this. Comes right around. And that, he just beats Washington. And Ja'Cory Harris felt it. That's up around the neck. That generally that's not how you block somebody. Boy, offensive line didn't move, and then Manuel that got might be, buried. That could be a safety, Sean. If, yeah, they're going to throw the flag in the end zone. That's a safety. Anthony Ciccolo had Manuel, who grounded the ball in the end zone. They're conferring to make sure the call is correct. Offense number eight. Throwing the ball from the tackle box into an area where there's no eligible receiver. The penalty will result in a safety. That was an odd play. It well, it's been an odd start to this game, and really, in a lot of ways, it's a typical rivalry game where you see a lot of strange things. And a lot because of a lot of emotion and trying to make a big play. But it looks like Florida State never got the snap count right, and so Manuel is not ready, so he tries to spin out of it. Look, he has his, he still has a mouthpiece in, and he put his wherewithal to put it in. But not the wherewithal to understand where he was. The center had to snap the ball early because none yes, of the offensive linemen moved, and clearly Manuel wasn't ready for it. Austin Barron, the center, is another true freshman, very talented. Another one of those players out of St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale. How good was their offensive line last year? Barron and Hart were on the offensive line for that high school last year. Now they're starting for Jimbo Fisher on the offensive line at Florida State as true freshmen. They, I think the state of Florida, now Texas would have a problem with this, and maybe California, but the state of Florida, they have more players down here, guys who can play at any place in the country. They ruled that he was in the end zone when he was, Ooh. well, see, Okay, but you know what? Actually, he's throwing it away. They didn't rule that he was necessarily. I guess they did. They did say he was in the end zone mm -hmm. when he threw it out. Now, you wonder if the replay booth is reviewing that. And we are told that they are. So hold the phone. Jeff Flanagan, the referee, made the call. As the ruling from Ted Jackson. The previous play is under further review whether the quarterback was in the end zone when he threw the ball. The ruling on the field is the quarterback was in the end zone when he threw the ball. Yeah, and I think looking at it, Sean, this really is one of those days. This is one, this is one of those days. days. We knew 10 seconds in it was going to be one of those days. Well, he is. The ball's in the end zone. His feet are not, and he's falling backward because Robinson and Chicolo are on top of him. Yeah, he throws that ball from the one-yard line. His feet are on the one. The ball is in the end zone. So they'll go with the feet. Although, in college football, it's where the ball is if it goes in the end zone or not, correct? Pretty sure it is. Well, the debate continues. They've announced that the play stands as called. Jimbo Fisher, you could read his lips a moment ago, saying to Jeff Flanagan, the referee, but his feet weren't in the end zone. Everybody saw that. The replay booth saying it's the position of the ball from which it was thrown, and the ball was over the plane of the end zone. So the call stands. And it is officially one of those days. So with two outs in the bottom of the third. Yes, pitcher's count, duel. The count goes to three and two. And it'll be a free kick executed by Florida State from its own 20-yard line. Well, it started 10 seconds in. First play from scrimmage. Miami threw a pass. 
Looked to be a completed pass. Now Jeff Flanagan's back. And he wants to make sure they got this right. In the replay booth. Replay overturned apparent defensive score by Florida State on the first play from scrimmage, and it was a close call. And we've got a lot of this view, since. The rule was misinterpreted. The passer released the ball when his feet were on the one half yard line. The ball will be placed at the one half yard line. Yeah. There is no safety. Maybe if we wait another 15 seconds, we'll get another rule. No, I thought that was right. I, the, the, we're talking about the plane of the end zone, but I don't think it applies in that situation. Apparently not. That is where your feet are when you release the ball. And after Jimbo Fisher got in the ear of Jeff Flanagan, they talked about it again. And clearly the ball's back in the end zone, but his feet were not in the end zone. I've lost my rule book, which, as you know, Matt, we have every week, so I think I've left it in a press box near you, <laughs> somewhere around this great country of ours. So I'd like to be able to cite the exact rule for you, but until we get another rule book up here, we're stuck right now. I have mine with me. However, it's back in the hotel room, so a lot <laughs> well, of good it's doing it does us a lot of good. Yes. I just thought in the interest of full disclosure, he'd like to read you the rule, which usually we do when episodes like this happen. They can't blame this review on faulty equipment. <laughs> but in defense of the officials on the field and the replay booth, you know, when do you see this? You when know. have you ever seen this call before? So they want to make sure they're applying the rule correctly and they know what it is. Well, lost in all this, Sean, is the fact that Florida State, a team that was looked as in this game to be the better of the two teams is clearly being outplayed by Miami. I think he just went back there to make sure they had the down right now. It is fourth down. Carlos Williams number nine and Greg Reed back deep. Receive the second half kickoff from Jake Wyclaw. Miami kicks off down 17 to 7. Despite the fact they had a decided statistical edge in the first half, they also committed a lot of mistakes. Here's the true freshman Williams. Flag down. Flag down back at the 28. It's a touchdown of its stands of 94 yards. Well, you can really see his strides. Of Carlos Williams, and once he got, once he hit those strike shots, there was nobody catching him. During the return, holding number 32, 10 yards for Sam. Mm. James Wilder Jr., like Williams, the true freshman, Carlos Williams, one of the most highly recruited players in the country coming out of high school in the spring out of Davenport, Florida, five star safety prospect. 6'2", 220, and as you saw, he can fly. He sure can. There's And there's 32 right there. Might have been embellished a bit by the Miami player. Yeah, he's going to get an Emmy right Ooh. after this. And you saw from how far away that flag was thrown. He made a decision to throw it into really tight coverage. He was lucky. They come after the putt, and they hit the putter. A flag is thrown. Greg Reed it's already returned a putt for a touchdown. But again, they hit the kicker. Personal foul, running the kicker in the 31. 15 yards previous spot, first down. Terrence Brooks ran into Dalton Botts. Huge play. Oh, boy. Did he yeah. even make contact? I mean, the leg's up over his head. I guess the top of his helmet might have grazed the leg. Well, that's part Academy Award and part right there. Yeah. He did he got he him. Just, just nicked it. And that's what you're trained to do as a punter. If they're even close to you, you fall down. 
Interesting formation here. The tackle, Feliciano's gone way out to the right of your screen, and they catch them off guard with that formation. Walford the catch, and he's just short of the end zone. In mind, Florida State's opponents have recovered two onside kicks against them this year, so they've been shaky in fielding onside kicks. Harris throws a wobbler. Oh, my goodness. Bird got laid out, and you knew that flag was coming. In today's football, you're just not going to be able to do that anymore. Nigel Bradham. Now, Sean, I'm going to say something here, okay? And I'll probably agree with you. But yeah. you knew as soon as you saw that, yeah. the flag was coming. And, that, and uh, there's two things here. To me, this, you should penalize. you got to penalize because that's the rule, okay? But that is on the quarterback. You should go back and beat your quarterback for even making an attempt to make that throw inside. You know you're going to get blown up. That is, that's that's just tough. Personal foul, illegal contact number 13. The runner launched, made contact. He's ejected from the ball game. Wow. The penalty is half a distance from the previous spot with an automatic first down. John, the, the problem as a defender, I don't even know. You can't change things once you've started the process of going in to make the tackle. The good news now is that Bird is being helped to his feet. Meanwhile, the crowd has already seen the replay, as you can hear their reaction. Uh, and that's a shoulder in the chest. Yeah, that, I think that's, that's a bad a, call. And that may have been a pick on the backside there. Everett Dawkins comes, and he, he may have that. Himself. He didn't launch himself. No, he didn't. His right foot's no. still on the ground. That's a horrible call. And they announced he was ejected from the game. Uh, that's not good. Here's their leading tackler, Jimbo Fisher, irate, pointing up at the screen. I don't blame him. Bradham still on the field. Well, it's been a bizarre day with the officials and the replay. Not to say they've been wrong all the time. Sometimes they've been proven right by the replays, but that's a disaster right there. Well, I thought that was a pretty good play by Nigel Bradham. Yep. 